pray. Lord, we have a stain of sin and debt that we've accumulated that just is just something that you took away. You washed it white as snow, and we get to celebrate, Jesus, what you did at the cross where you bore our sins on yourself. We get to celebrate that here as we prepare to take the Lord's Supper. Jesus, I pray that you would be magnified as we do this, and it's in your great name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. As we're going to spend some time in God's Word, we want to make sure that everyone has a copy of God's Word in your hand. So if you do not yet have a copy of God's Word, go ahead and raise your hand, and one of the men will be glad to put a copy of God's Word in your hand. And if you do not own a copy of God's Word, then that's yours to take home. Please open your Bibles to Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Today, in our culture, it's relatively easy to profess to be a Christian. There's typically not considerable cost associated with claiming the name of Christ. Usually, there's no suffering or significant persecution, at least right now here in our country, there's also not really the threat of death or martyrdom for proclaiming Christ. But what does God's word have to say about the potential cost for being a Christian? Is it costly? We're going to be focusing on uh, chapter 9, verse 23, but I'm going to read some of the surrounding context. I'm going to start reading in verse 20. And Jesus said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Peter answered and said, the Christ of God. But Jesus warned them and instructed them not to tell this to anyone, saying, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. And Jesus was saying to them all, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. For what is a man profited if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. Jesus is clearly laying out the significant cost associated with being a true Christian. And here in verse 23, Jesus lays out three imperatives, three requirements for his followers. He says, if anyone wishes to come after me, if anyone wishes to be one of my disciples, he must, number one, deny himself. He must disregard, renounce, completely disown himself. This is everything that he was before he was a follower of Christ. The carnal, unregenerate, self-focused, worldly, disobedient, fleshly person. This word for deny, this is the same word that, Peter, that was used when Peter denied Christ. When Peter denied knowing Christ, when Peter denied him, he completely disowned his master. Believers are not called to simply, to a simple or casual effort here. When one by faith begins to follow Christ, they deny. They disown and renounce who they were before turning to follow him. This is a radical change of life. Have you denied yourself, disowned your old self to pursue Christ? If anyone wishes to come after me, he must, number two, take up his cross daily. When the first century people heard this, 
when they heard Jesus utter these words, take up his cross, they only had one thing on, his mind, on their minds. They had a vivid instrument of torture and execution. If a person was carrying a cross, that person was condemned. They were sentenced to death. The condemned person would carry their crossbeam to the place of execution where they would be hoisted up and affixed on it, affixed on the stake. The condemned would then suffer a slow, agonizing death. This is the picture that they had in mind when Christ said this. And this phrase is not a general reference to the suffering that humans experience under the effects of the fall. Those are real, but that's not what this passage is talking about. These first century people were being told that to be a disciple of Christ meant that they must be willing to suffer and even to die for Christ. They must be willing to do this daily. And many of these first century Christians would do exactly that. Many of them suffered because of Christ. Many of them were martyred because of Christ. Are you willing to suffer because of Christ? Are you willing to possibly even lose your life for Christ, for his sake? If anybody wishes to come after me, he must, number three, follow me. Christ's followers are to walk in the same way that he walked. They are to live in the same way that he lived. They are to humbly, submissively obey his commands. No human is going to do this perfectly. There will be stumbling, and where there is stumbling, that sin is confessed and repented of and turned from, and that person keeps on following. Are you living like Christ? Are you living in obedience to Christ? Are you following Christ? We've come to the time in our service when believers remember Christ's body that was given and his blood that was shed. And we do this, as we do this, we proclaim his death and what it accomplished. Many among the crowds that were following Christ around during his ministry, they were fed by Christ food. They were even healed by Christ. They sat under his teaching, but they were not many, most even, were not his followers. They were not his disciples. We just looked at what Jesus requires of those who would profess to be a Christian. Does that describe you? And if you would, by your own admission, say that that, that just doesn't describe me, that's not who I am, then we would simply ask that when the tray comes that you would simply just pass that by. We're excited that you're here, but I would ask you, what are you holding on to that you're not willing to give up for Christ? Do you understand that if you are ashamed of Christ and his words, that when he comes, God's word says that he's going to be ashamed of you? Believer, Christ suffered many things and was rejected and was crucified. At the cross, he suffered the physical pains of crucifixion. But so much more than that, he suffered the wrath of God. He suffered under the wrath of God for your sins. He took your place and bore your penalty. His blood satisfied the wrath of God for you. He paid an infinite price for your salvation. And by grace, and only by grace, you have received it. Your sins have been forgiven. To be a true Christian is costly. It may actually cost everything this world holds dear. But the truth is, you give up nothing to gain everything. You've been forgiven and you get to look forward to seeing him face to face and being with him forever. When your hearts are prepared, please take communion 
on your own. Men, please come serve us.